Hello and welcome to this video on how to analyze the results of a statistical experiment. The idea behind a statistical experiment is you have an outcome which depends on several different variables and your goal is to determine what variables it depends on and how it depends on those variables so that you can get the best outcome possible. For this video we'll do an example that's kind of dumb but amusing. Programmers have been called organisms that convert pizza and caffeine into code and we're going to actually test that with an experimental design. To design an experiment we look at factors and in this case I'll call factor A the amount of pizza that we're providing to the programmers. And we will look specifically at a 2 to the k, in this case it will be a 2 squared experimental design. So I'm going to have a high value which I will define to be three slices for our pizza and a low value which I'll define to be one slice. The other factor is going to be the amount of caffeine and we'll assume that the preferred vehicle for delivering caffeine is Mountain Dew. So low would be one can and high would be four cans. The way I'll run the experiment is for every combination of these factors, so for factor A low and factor B low, that is programmers given one slice of pizza and one can of Mountain Dew, I'll see how well they do in terms of their productivity. Uh, I'll have some programmers that are given three slices of pizza but only one can of Mountain Dew and see how well they do. I'll have programmers that are given only one slice of pizza but four cans of Mountain Dew and see how well they do. And similarly I'll have uh, three slices and four cans. Okay, So the idea is I'm going to actually collect data for each possible combination of my two factors. In this study, I'll collect data on three programmers for each of the combinations. So since there are two factors, each factor has two possible values, that's four possible combinations, and for each combination I'll have three programmers, I'm going to collect 12 data points. So if you'll excuse me for a moment while I go make up my data points. Okay, so here I've made up some values again in programmer productivity units and in real life it's almost impossible to really measure productivity like this. Again I have two factors A and B and I have four combinations and I represent those four combinations by these codes in the first column. The parenthesis one is the low value for both A and B. So in our case that would be one can of Mountain Dew and one slice of pizza. And having done the experiment with three programmers, I have these productivity units. A represents the high value for factor A and the low value for factor B. So this is people that got three slices of pizza and one can of Mountain Dew, and their productivity was five, six, and five, or six, five, and six. B represents those who got Mountain Dew at the high end, pizza at the low end. Their productivity was um, 12, 9, and 11. AB represents the people that got uh, three slices of pizza and four cans of Mountain Dew, and their productivity is given here. So the way we represent this is those treatment combinations where treatment A was at the high value are marked with a plus in this column. Those at the low value are marked with a minus. So we have minus, plus, minus, plus for A. For B we have minus, minus, plus, plus. AB represents an interaction between A and B and here we'll call it a plus a minus, a minus, and a plus. And we'll show how these are used in just a minute. But before that, we need to create 
our statistics uh, of our collected data. So total is going to be the sum of the three different replicates for each combo. And I get that with the spreadsheet with sum. Average is going to be the sample mean of my three replicates. And variance is going to be the sample variance of my three replicates. I'll copy it down to the bottom row, or to all of them. Okay, now we're going to find the effects of the treatments. And we'll find an effect of A, an effect of B, and an effect of the interaction AB. And we'll compute the effects in the following way. In this case, we have three replicates. So the effect of A is going to be 1 divided by 6, which is 2 times 3. Um, if we had two replicates, it would be 1 divided by 4, which is 2 times 2. But in this case, again, we have three replicates. So it's going to be 1 divided by 6 times the sum of A, which in this case is 17, plus the sum of AB. So we're adding totals from the combinations that include A, and then we will subtract totals from combinations that don't include A. So that's minus 12 and minus 32. And this number, which in this case turns out to be 0, is the effect of A. Uh, you can think of an effect as essentially the effect that um, treatment A has on the outcome. We'll compute an effect for B in the same way. So it's going to be 1 sixth times the sums that are added, or that have a plus in the column. So we get the 32 plus the 27 minus the 12 and minus the 17. And so you can see here the effect is 5. And then we'll get uh, the interaction effect of A and B by, again, 1 over 6 times the total here plus the total here. Those are the two totals that have pluses in the AB column minus the total here and the total here. And that gives us our effects. The effects basically tell us whether or not a particular factor has an effect on the outcome of our experiment. Being statisticians, we can't just say, well, the effect of A looks pretty small, it's close to zero, the effect of B looks pretty large, and the effect of AB looks negative, but somewhere between the magnitude of the others. We have to actually build in statistical significance tests. And to do that, we need to understand the error associated with our measurements. And we will do that by essentially averaging the variance that we have for each of the treatment combinations. So our average variance, or again, we're going to average over all four treatment combinations. It's just the average. And we get that variance. The standard error of our effects, in this case, is going to be the square root of our estimated variance divided by, in our case, because we're doing a two-factor experiment, it'll just be the number of replicates we have. And that gives us our standard error. With the effects and our standard error, we can now do a t-test on each of the effects to determine if they are statistically different than zero. So the idea is we will compute a t-ratio and use this t-ratio then to determine whether or not uh, these effects are significant at a given level. To compute the t-ratio, I take the effect value, divide it by the standard error. And now we can compute a p-value with our t-ratio. The number of degrees of freedom in this case is 4 times 2, which is 8. 
and we want it to be in mode 2. And here we need to make this an absolute value because the T disk doesn't like it if it's not. Okay, so we have our P values and you can see that the P value for A is 1 which says that our uh, effect A is essentially is statistically zero. That is, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that A is zero. Our p-value for B is very small, which means that we can reject the hypothesis for B that it is close to zero. And our t-value for the interaction AB is also fairly small. Uh, it's quite a bit smaller than 0 0.05, which is a typical standard uh, value for significance. So uh, we reject the null hypothesis that the AB effect is less than or, or is equal to zero. Now we may want to create a regression model that tells us how each of the factors affect the outcome. And for this regression model, we'll actually have two variables. We'll have x1 is either plus one or minus one. Plus one will correspond to factor A at its high value. Minus one will correspond to factor A at its low value. X2 will correspond to factor B with a one representing the high value and a negative one representing the low value. And then the product of X1 and X2 will represent factor AB. Our regression model needs to have four coefficients, beta zero, beta one, beta two, and beta one, two. Beta zero is just the average of all of our data values. Beta 1 is the effect for A divided by 2. Beta 2 is the effect for B divided by 2. And beta 1, 2 is the effect for AB divided by 2. Now having created the regression model, we've already decided that the effect of A is statistically indistinguishable from 0 which means there's no point in including the regression coefficient in a regression model because it's essentially zero. Our regression model is going to be y is equal to beta zero plus beta two times x two. Again, we're not putting in beta one because it's statistically zero plus beta one two times x1 times x2. And with this model now, we can actually compute the y values we would expect for the different combinations of x1 and x2. Okay, so these are the possible values for x1 and x2. And I can now compute y. This will actually be an estimate of the productivity based on my regression model, so I'll call it y hat. So y hat in this case is going to be beta zero plus beta two times x two plus beta one two times x one times x2. So that gives me an estimated y hat of 4. And I do that for the other ones. So we get these values for y hat. We can now compute residuals. The residual for observation 3 would be observation 3 minus y hat for that treatment combination, which in this case would be the low value of A and the low value of B. Our y hat for the low value of A and the low value of B is 4. Computing the residuals. Okay, so this gives us our residuals. The last thing to do is to check to see if our residuals look anything at all like a normal distribution. And we do this by creating a normal probability plot. Okay, so what I've done is copied all of my residuals into just a single column. 
And now I'm going to sort my residuals into ascending order. And now I'm going to create quantiles for a normal distribution. I'm going to do it as follows. I'll have the quantile number 1, 2, 3, up through 12. And I'll use the following formula. Norm S inverse of my quantile minus oops, 0 0.5 divided by the number I have, which is 12. And if I do this correctly, bring it down, I now have a set of quantiles from the normal distribution. And the only thing left to do to create a probability plot is to plot these as a scatter plot relative to each other. Okay, so after I create the plot and rearrange it so it's nicely placed, you can see that my residuals fall in pretty much a straight line. And the fact that they fall in pretty much a straight line means that the residuals are at least quite approximately uh, normal. And I've inserted a trend line here so you can actually see a line to compare the residuals with. And as I pointed out, they're not that far off. To summarize what we've done, we found the effects of each of the factors and discovered in this particular case that the amount of pizza that you give a programmer appears not to dramatically affect their productivity. On the other hand, the amount of Mountain Dew you give a programmer does affect, appear to affect their productivity quite strikingly. And it also turns out that if you give a programmer a lot of Mountain Dew and a lot of pizza, the pizza actually has a somewhat negative effect on their productivity. So there is an interaction between the Mountain Dew and the pizza.